Question 10 from Section 1 of the 2019 National 5 Physics Examination. A student sets up the circuit shown. In which circuit will both LEDs be lit? This question is testing us out if we know the correct arrangement for a symbol of an LED in a circuit which will light it up in a real circuit. Here, in fact, is a real LED here, and there is its symbol. You can see two legs, and each leg must be connected in the proper way to the battery. The right-hand leg should be connected to the minus part of the battery, and the left-hand leg should be connected to the positive side of the battery for the LED to work properly and conduct and therefore give off light. On the real LED, the right-hand leg, uh, the, the part which you want to connect to the negative part of the battery is shown by a kind of flattened side in the, ca in the case. So that gives you an idea where to connect that leg and that must be connected to the minus part of the circuit. The actual symbol for LED is made up of a triangle and it's made up of a vertical bar joined together and a line, horizontal line going straight through representing uh, the wire going all the way through the LED if you can think of it that way. Two arrows are given off and these indicate light given off. LEDs must also have a protective resistor but in this little diagram here we'll just leave out the protective resistor for clarity. So let's see how the proper arrangement of an LED is. There's our circuit with the plus side and the minus side. If I place the circuit symbol like that, then that is properly connected. The LED is properly connected and it will light. Now, the rule of thumb to remember that is if you think of the triangle part, the triangle is pointing towards the minus of the battery. That is the clue that it's properly connected. It will conduct and give off light. If I turn the LED around the other way, you can see the pointy part of the triangle is pointing towards the plus side of the battery. So it's incorrectly connected and therefore it will not light. In fact, no current will flow in the circuit because an LED is a light emitting diode and diodes only work in one direction. If you have a series circuit and you connect the two LEDs like this, then even though one of the LEDs, this one here, has got the pointy part of the triangle connected to the minus part, is correctly positioned, it still won't light because its partner here, the pointy part of its triangle, is connected to the plus side. So that blocks off the current, and if it blocks off the current, it's going to block off the other LED, and therefore none of the LEDs are going to light up. Now, if we go back to our circuits then, the very first circuit is in fact a parallel circuit. But you can think of the parallel circuit as made up of two branches, first branch and the second branch. So just check the LED in the first branch to see if it's properly connected. And if you look very closely, you can see the pointy part of the triangle is connected to the minus part of the circuit. So therefore, it's properly connected. So that LED, if I can colour it in green, say, will light up because it's in a separate branch from the other one. If we look at the other branch, we can see that the pointy part of the triangle is, is, is pointing towards the plus side of the battery, which means it's not going to light up. So that one there is not going to light up. So we can call that a blocker. But because the first LED is in a separate branch, then that LED is going to light up. Now let's look at circuit B. Let's look at the top LED. The top LED, the pointy part of the triangle, is connected all the way through to the minus part of the battery. So that is connected properly. But the bottom LED here, the pointy part, is connected to the plus side of the battery. So that is going to not work. It's going to be a blocker. And because that's blocked, and because it's a serious circuit, then the other LED is going to be blocked. So none of those LEDs are going to light up. If we look at circuit C, let's look at the top LED. The pointy part is connected to the plus part of the battery. Therefore, it's not going to light up and it's going to block the electricity going to the other LED, even though it's connected in the proper fashion, pointy part to negative part. So those two LEDs are not going to light up. In circuit D, if we look at the bottom LED, uh, LED. The pointy part is connected round again to the plus part of the circuit. Therefore, that is going to be a blocker. It's not going to light up. 
it's connected the wrong way. And the top LED, the pointed part, is connected to the plus part of the battery. So that's going to be blocked anyway. So none of those LEDs are going to light. That leaves us just with circuit E. So let's see. Circuit E, the top LED, you can see the pointed part is connected to the negative of the supply. And the bottom LED, the pointed part, is connected to the negative supply. So there's no blocking LED there. So both LEDs are going to light up. So the key fact to remember this one is that if one LED in a series circuit is incorrectly connected, then all the other LEDs in the series circuit will not light up. So our answer for that is going to be answer E. Question 11 from section 1 of the 2019 National 5 Physics Examination. A circuit is set up as shown. The room temperature is 20 degrees Celsius and the lamp is off. Now we're asked to find when the lamp will light given five circuit conditions. Let's look at the circuit and decide what it is. The circuit is a circuit which depends on the light level. You can see the input to the transistor, which is its base, is connected across the light-dependent resistor. So, whatever the voltage across the light-dependent resistor, if it's above 0 0.7 volts, it will switch on the transistor, make it conduct, and therefore light the lamp. So we've got to decide it's going to be one which is going to come on when the light level decreases or the light level increases. Now, to help us understand this, I'm going to take you to a simulation. And the simulation is a similar circuit. The only one difference, instead of a lamp, we have got an LED. Now, we have got the light depend resistor in the bottom half of the input chain and the variable resistor on the top. And you can see the LD, uh, LDR is uncovered, which means it's in the light, and the small LED is not on. Now, if I put the LDR into the dark, yes, the LED comes on. So this is a circuit which works when the light level falls. Uh, the light level getting bigger and the light goes off. So when the light level falls, the LED comes on. Now, to help us understand this, I'm going to show you the voltage and the resistance across each of the input components. And there they are there. You can see the LDR is sitting with a resistance of 3000 ohms and it's got a voltage across it of 0.19 volts. That's the input voltage to the transistor. Now remember, the transistor will only come on when the voltage or the input voltage to that base of the transistor exceeds 0.7 volts. So you can see it when we plunge the LED, uh, the light dependent resistor, sorry, into darkness, when it goes above that level, 0.7 volts, the light comes on. So, the light level decreases, the lamp will light. When the light level increases, the lamp will go off. So, statement B is wrong. Now, what happens when we increase the resistance of the variable resistor? Well, we can do that by just changing the variable resistance. And that's me increasing the resistance. And you can see I make resistance very big. But all that's doing is capturing a bigger share of the 6 volts that's been shared out. You can see it's now sitting at 5.94 volts. And that means there's going to be a less voltage for the LDR, which means less voltage at the input to the transistor. You can see it's sitting at 0 0.06 volts, which is not enough to turn on the transistor, which will turn on the little lamp or the LED. So the resistance, if I make the resistance of the variable resistor more, it will not light the lamp. Now, if I vary the voltage across the battery, going from 0 to 6 volts to 5 volts, then the same argument applies. I am reducing the amount of voltage to share, and therefore, in this particular case, uh, in the, the voltage across the LDR, there'll be less to share, which means the lamp will be off if I reduce it to 5 volts. And the final one, what about the temperature of the circuit? Well, this circuit doesn't depend on temperature. It only depends on light. And that's why it, when the light level goes down, the resistance increases. It gets a bigger share of the voltage. And if that voltage goes above 0.72 of a volt, the LED will light. This is a circuit which is going to come on when the light level falls. So, having studied the circuit, we know that the lamp will light when the light level is decreased below a certain value, and that is answer A. Question 12 from Section 1 of the National 5 Physics Examination. A circuit is set up as shown. 
A student makes the following statements about the readings on the voltmeters. Now the circuit comprises of three resistors, R1 and R2 and R3. R2 and R3 are in parallel. And we assume, since they're all different uh, names, R1, R2 and R3 are all different valued resistors. Now, our statements are the following. Uh, the student makes a statement 1, V1 equals V2. And statement 2, voltmeter 2 reading must equal voltmeter 3 reading. And statement 3, voltmeter from the supply, the voltage from the supply should equal V1 plus V2. Now, in order to do this question, it's good to practice on the PHET site and get an idea of the different circuit rearrangements. So that's what I'm going to do now, is move over now to the PHET site, the simulation site, a wonderful site for you and get plenty of practice on your circuits. Make the circuits up, construct them, measure the voltage at different parts of the circuit and get a feel for an electric circuit, its voltages and its currents and its resistances. So, let's go over now to the PHET site. Okay, welcome to the PHET site where I've constructed a circuit which is identical to the one in the question. We have resistance R1 and we have resistance R2 and R3, R2 and R3 being in parallel. And we've got the voltage supply up the top and I've chosen the voltage supply to be 12 volts. So the voltmeter across the voltage supply equals 12 volts. Now our first statement is that the voltage across resistance 1 should equal the voltage across resistance 2. So let's measure the voltage across the first resistor and we get a value of 7 volts. Now from our second theory we know that if the voltage across the first resistor is 7 volts then the voltage across the branch containing the two other resistors must equal 5 volts because 5 volts and 7 volts must equal the sum of the voltage from the supply and that's 12 volts so let's measure the voltage across the branch and we have 5 volts so that's correct so when we measure the voltage across the top resistor it'll be identical because remember resistors or components in a parallel branch the voltage across each component in the parallel branch will be the same so the voltage across resistor R3 will be the same so what we can say for the first statement is that the first statement is incorrect. Uh, the voltage across resistance 1 is 7 volts and the voltage across resistance R2 is going to be 5 volts. So statement 1 is incorrect. Now what about the statement the voltage across V2 and V3? Well, we've already shown that the voltage across any component in a parallel branch in the circuit will always be the same. 5 volts across the bottom resistor, that's V3 voltage across R3 and the voltage across R2 will be V2 which is 5 volts. So that statement is correct. The voltage V2 equals the voltage V3. So statement 2 is correct. Now what about statement 3? The voltage of supply should equal the voltage across resistance 1 plus the voltage across resistance 2. Well we've already proven that. We know that the voltage across the supply is 12 volts and the voltage across the first resistor is going to be 7 volts which leaves 5 volts across the branch which has got the parallel circuits in it and we know that's going to make 5 volts there and therefore we know that the voltage across each component is going to be the same so the voltage across V2 will be 5 volts as well so we can say that V1 which is going to be 7 volts, and V2 is going to be 5 volts, does equal the voltage of the supply. So, statement 3 is correct. So, back to question. Question 12, and we have statement 1 is wrong, statement 2 is correct, and statement 3 is correct. And when we look at our responses, we can see that response D will be the correct one, because statement 2 and statement 3 only. So, question 12, answer D.